Hello and welcome to the latest and penultimate uh, episode of a discussion. Uh, I am once again joined by Anton uh, and we're here to discuss, I mean, uh, a week that we never really uh, at times thought would, would come this season. Uh, we've had a lot of things confirmed and then we've gone on to, to a great result against Fleetwood as well. But first of all, Anton, uh, how are you? Good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, yeah. Not bad, thank you very much. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we saw a week that uh, has, has seen two two big events really a, a slightly um, slow paced uh, uh, definitely scrappy one one draw uh, away at Wigan, uh, which did though confirm our, our safety in League One that we'll be playing in this league next year. Which at times has uh, certainly looked like uh, it was on a, a bit of a knife edge point, uh, but but we got that over the line and then we went on with a, a huge a huge result against against Fleetwood a five two win at home for Jimmy as well. Um, must be the first time we've scored five goals in uh, in quite some time, and and it was a really open game, really good performance, two good results from that, and and most importantly of all, uh, we'll be back here next season. Yeah, I think you know, I think I think everyone will say it that you know, four or five months ago, to be in this position with three games to go at the time, obviously two now to be safe in League One, another season, uh, a good level of football for our little club. Um, I think anybody would have said you were dreaming. So the turnaround since then is unbelievable, as we spoke about every week. Um, hats off to everybody involved, uh, whether that be from obviously the chairman for making the decision around Christmas, uh, for him then getting obviously Jimmy and Dino in, and Jimmy and Dino themselves and their support staff for obviously getting the best out of the players that are existingly there. And obviously then also doing work in the transfer market very, very quickly. Uh, in bringing people into the club and getting people out of the club to balance the books. Um, but what a turnaround in general and fair play to everybody involved because you know, the old players, it must have been really, really difficult, uh, low on confidence. Um, obviously, and after the last kind of 12 months, nobody really knew what was happening. And then obviously then the new players coming in and bedding in as well with the old players. Um, testament to them. Everybody's acted professionally, it seems, on the outside. Um, everybody's got the job done. It looks like there was no squabbling. Everybody's been it together. Um, I would say we've, since Christmas, we've looked like a really good team. And you say, you look at the form tables, which I you know we talk about, and I say, I'm not a big believer in that, but you know, half a season now, and we would have been top, I think, from the games played. So, or certainly in the top four. So, a tremendous turnaround and something we should be really proud of. And saying we're proud of not being relegated, but the position we're in, it's something we should be proud of. Yeah, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head there. It's just been an incredible turnaround from everyone. Um, like I said, the players come in, the, the players already here, Luke Sakens, John Braithford, Michael Boswick, Ben Garrett, all kind of cemented themselves in the in, in Jimmy's plans, um, uh, Jimmy and Dino's plans, Kane Hemmings in there as well, who's bagged a few, scored two against Fleetwood off the bench uh, on, on Tuesday as well. So it's just been, yeah, it's been incredible. And to do it with three games to go is, is quite some achievement. And it might get uh, brushed under the carpet by, I don't know, some of the, the bigger teams in the league this season, but it, it shouldn't. And, you know, there's been times before when, I know, when we're in the championship, we stayed up in the championship slightly different circumstances albeit and it was kind of not really recognized I think Leicester won the league that season Brighton had a really good season and, and won the league or got promoted automatically and, and no one really acknowledged what we'd done it's almost uh, the same this time there's kind of still craziness going on at the top of league one uh, and and in other leagues as well but no overall we've done an incredible job uh, the players everyone you know as you mentioned so it'll be um, yeah we'll just get ourselves ready for, for, for next season? Yeah, I think, you know, you look at people say manager of the year, there's Hull City that you would have expected to be up there. There's Peterborough you expect to be up there. And those two teams haven't changed their manager. You look beyond that, uh, the, the clubs that are in and around the playoffs, I think the majority of them have changed their manager at some point this season. Um, and none of them were ever out of really the playoff reckoning. So they've changed it for trying to get that a little bit more. Whereas we changed halfway through the season when we were dead and buried. Um, so for me, I know it won't probably work like this, but to me, there's only one manager of the year in League One and that, unfortunately, I'll say unfortunately, but it is, it's Jimmy. You know, the, the work he's done 
with Dino and the rest of his support staff is absolutely fantastic. Uh, a bit disappointed when you named all your players from before you missed out Ryan Edwards, who is certainly a, a player of the year candidate for me and a, a big one to have missed, but I'll let you off. Um, but as you said, you know, we can now look forward to next season. Um, I think we will all can be really optimistic about what we can achieve. Um, I think we've got to be really careful that we don't um, get too ahead of ourselves and think we're going to walk through the playoffs or promotion, you know. It's taken a real struggle and a big battle this year to turn it around. But, you know, with a, there's going to be some squad movement, um, you know, and with a bit of tweaking. Um, so, yeah, things are capable of being a hell of a lot better next season. But I just hope that people keep their feet on the floor and we just plod on again like we have done the back end of this season and turned it around. And we've done our things quite quietly and we've got out of trouble. Um, we don't want to be go gung-ho at it and throw everything away and go back to where we were. Um, I'd rather just do our business quietly and keep going up the leagues, try and play a bit more entertaining football uh, and just see where it gets us. But with two games to go now, after being safe, it's a chance for some other players that haven't probably been started or been in the round the squad to get game time, to show Jimmy and Dino what um, what they're capable of, um, if they can, what they've got on offer to, for Burton Albion going forward. Um or put themselves in a shot window for, for going elsewhere if uh, their future isn't at the Albion. So there's still lots to play for in these last two games as well. Yeah, and I mean, it was kind of sort of that kind of a bit more of an expansive style uh, against Fleetwood, I think. And it was quite an open game, obviously, with seven goals in it. You'd expect something similar. But first of all, the Wigan game where we just kind of, I don't really think we ever uh, kicked into gear really, but, but as we have done with, uh, since Jimmy and Dino have come in, we just kind of we ground out the result. We Joe Powell scored a, I mean a pretty sublime free kick, and though we conceded from from a corner not too long after, it was all about the result at the end of the day, and that was the result that that kept us in the league for certain. Uh, so not the best, not the best advert for for League One football, but we we got the job done there. Yeah, I think the players have probably gone in there into the game a little bit nervous even though obviously there was three games to go uh, after that game, I think they would have wanted to get job done as soon as possible. They say from the position they were in to the position they're in now is credit and testament to everybody involved. But I think just to finally get those words of we're definitely safe and no one else has been able to, to catch us, I think would have been a massive relief and pressure and weight lifted off everybody's shoulders in and around the club. So, yeah, I think we expected a scrappy game Last week, um, obviously, Liam Richardson being appointed permanent manager last week, uh, he kind of gets to start doing his own things properly now and planning for the future, the same way as obviously Jimmy will now for the League One next season. So I don't think it was ever going to be a, an open, expansive, expressive game. It was always going to be nip and tuck, uh, neither team probably wanting to lose. Um, and, you know, we were professional. We, you know, we got the job, we got the job done. And the soft goal maybe from the set piece switched off a little bit but a point nonetheless and secured safety for another year. Yeah, and I pretty much said it as it was there. It's a scrappy game, but but we got the point. And then we went into to Tuesday, Fleetwood, who have picked up, uh, kind of picked up a little bit of late. Um, and, and I mean, it was a it was a great game to watch. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure Jimmy and Dino would be happy with the conceding two goals, but no, we've, we've scored five and, all five of these goals are, are absolutely brilliant. I mean, watching those first two fly in was was incredible. And overall, it's, it's a huge result for us. We've really kind of put a marker down, and put our stamp on on the league. With you know, we beat Doncaster three 0 we beat Crew three 0 Now we've um, you know, beaten Fleetwood five two. We're just kind of you know, slowly but surely letting everyone know that that we're here. And next season, we'll probably uh, we'll be coming for them. Yeah, I think out of the five goals, there was three very, very good finishes. Obviously, Luke, Lucas Aitkins curled in left foot, foot shot uh, into the top left-hand corner. Obviously, there was Joe Powell's free kick. And I thought Kane Hemmings' first goal was a very good finish as well. Um, and just showed, you know, that he has scored a lot of goals in and around all the leagues he's been in. Um, and, you know, in the past, he's gone quiet at times. But it seems to be fairly consistent in picking goals up in his Burton Albion career at League One. So... You know, uh, I'm excited to see how much Jimmy can get out of him in pre-season next year. Obviously, with Jimmy's experience of being a striker, how he can develop. Um, 
what you say on Tuesday night, they played with less pressure, I think. Um, as you say, two sloppy-ish goals. We had Kieran O'Hara return to the side, given a chance. Um, Josh Hill given a chance. Terry Taylor, Danny Rowe. You know, these guys looking to see what um, they can bring to the table for next season and show Jimmy what they can do. Uh, I don't think any of them were did bad. I think everyone kind of did okay in the game. Um, I think we'll see more of that this week and next week in the last two games as well. Um, but we make, need to ensure we don't take the foot off the gas and we keep kind of um, progression as a team, as a unit, uh, keep the momentum going and can make sure we start or go into next season on a winning run and or certainly an unbeaten run and try and propel from there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and you, you actually, Reverend yeah, mind mentioned Kieran O'Hara. We've spoken about it before. It kind of has gone a little bit quiet recently. We've seen Ben Garrett kind of, kind of make that that number one spot uh, his own. Uh, but now we've got Kieran O'Hara's come back into the fray. Obviously, after it's been it's been confirmed for us, is it just a case of kind of getting him some minutes? Um, I mean, there's with, <laughs> there's so many possible reasons that he. he could be starting. Uh, I don't know if there's an injury to Van Garrett first of all, and then you've got them there. Is he looking to see if he's uh, going to stay on next season? Uh, is he kind of being pushed, putting the the shop window a little bit to kind of, you know, see if anyone's anyone wants a, uh, you know, wants a bite? I don't know. It's a of an interesting situation, and you know, we mentioned how we'd ended up with these kind of three goalkeepers that we all, uh, well, me and you felt could could all start for us and. Uh, now we're seeing the, the the second of the three. Yeah, I think um, only Jimmy will know what his I think his plans are with the goalkeeping situation. Um, I think Ben Garrett's done okay. He's done well. He's done what's asked of him. Um, I think you know, Kieran O'Hara's confidence. I think we spoke about it before. Um, being released from Man United after being there for so long would have been a kick in the teeth. Obviously, he tried to find another club before joining us. Probably. Hope to get a, a better standard probably than League One, but didn't. And obviously then there's having that that bad start to the season and bad run up to Christmas with him in goals, the majority of it. It must have been a real sickening blow for him. And you know, he must have been really low on confidence. And that I think was probably one of the biggest reasons why Ben Garrett was probably given the jersey to start with to kind of um give him a breather. And you know, he's gone on week in, week out, and he's got slowly better. Obviously, that ties in with Andy Key coming in as goalkeeper coach. I'm sure he's done a lot of work with the three goalkeepers. As we're bringing in Dylan Barnes as well in January, um, giving some hefty competition in there alongside obviously Callum Hawkins as well, the up and coming goalkeeper. So it's a position that um, be interesting to see what happens in the summer. I think it's a position that I think we can still improve on. Whether that be Kieran O'Hara comes back fresh, um, clears his mind a little bit, and gets going and show what everybody what he's capable of. Um, you know, Ben Garrett's done well um, for me. I, I still think Kieran O'Hara is the better goalkeeper overall. Uh, I think if we're going to progress and play a better standard higher up the league, I think we do need to improve that goalkeeping situation. But, you know, fair play to Garrett for coming in, um, you know, when the chips were down and he's done a good job for us. So it'd be interesting to see. It's probably the one position in the summer I'm most excited to find out what happens about. Yeah, and I think actually the rest of the team from there, kind of, so long as we don't have any uh, people coming in to, to nab our players, the rest of the team kind of uh, puts itself down a little bit. Um, we've got good depth, though, and, you know, I'm sure, as you mentioned earlier, Jimmy and Dino will be looking to, to bring some some players in, add to the squad that we've already got now, which is looks really strong. Um, Hayden Carter, I mean, he's, he's been a, a great, a great sign-in for us, I think. He's up there for, for me with one of the, the players of the season. Uh, you mentioned Ryan Evans earlier, uh, of course, as well. But he's been, he's come in on loan. He's done a, a good job. Uh, I think he's one of the positions that we'll, we'll have to look at replacing or, uh, you know, we need to, a little bit more depth up there. Uh, but overall, we're, we've got a really good kind of, it uh, looks like we've got a really good plan set out for how we're going to approach next season, how we're going to, Kind of move on from what has been, I think, for the last uh, five, six months, a very, very successful season uh, this year and uh, push on from there. Yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, you look at the squad very quickly now. You know, Kieran O'Hara's got another year left. I think Ben Garrett's out of contract and obviously Dylan Barnes 
is in on loan. Uh, you've got John Brayford, another year on his deal. And then you've got Tom Hamer that signed a two and a half year contract. So, you know, the right back area looks pretty strong. Uh, I think Boswick only signed a one year deal. Uh, obviously, Hayden Carter going back, uh, probably to Blackburn on loan. Michael Mancian, again, only signed to the end of the season. Kieran Wallace is out injured. Uh, JJ, John Joe Tall, I think, is out of contract. So, the centre half department is going to look a little bit light. So, he's got to, got to extend some deals there somewhere or obviously um, try and get Hayden Carter back on loan. But I'm sure he'll have a plan with that. Left back position, obviously, you've got Josh Earl on loan. So, he's another one that isn't guaranteed to be back. And we probably haven't seen as much of him as we expected with Tom Heyman playing there most weeks. Um, Colin Daniel being out of contract. Reese Hutchinson, I think, is out of contract. But I'm not sure. Two we haven't really seen much of. But obviously, then also. I mean, Gallagher signing that deal um, early on in the season to extend is. So, you know, the defence, there is a lot of work, I think, to do there in the transfer market. You still then look at Danny Rose's short-term deal. Johnny Smith's on a long-term deal, so obviously he'll stay. Sean Clare's in on loan. I think Ryan Edwards has got another year. Um, Lucas Aikens is out of contract. Uh, and obviously your mate Mike as well, you know, he's only on a short-term deal as well. So there's still... There's still work to be done in the summer. Um, we've got a, a good basis to start with. Uh, it's now for Jimmy to decide for those players, can he get them and keep them? Does he want to get them and keep them? Or are there better players out there to hopefully upgrade and, and get a, a better squad together than that's already got? But, you know, that's no disrespect to any of them out there. But, you know, to push on and burn out, we want to try and better the squad if we can. But, you know, there's work to be done. I'm sure Jimmy, you know, he's brought in Neil Hornby, I think, to do a bit of homework on, I think there was two lists being drawn for League 2 and League 1, whatever league we're going to be in. I'm sure they'll have a, a good sight of targets and if it's anything like the January transfer window, then, you know, there were some good astute additions um, full of youth, full of energy and that's only going to prospect well for the future. Yeah, you mentioned the, the January transfer window, which was has been a huge success for us. I mean, hopefully we can, can carry that over. Uh, but no, I expect we're kind of reaching the point now where in the next uh, few few weeks, we'll start to see those, hopefully, uh, touch with those new contracts kind of working their way through. Um, hopefully, you know, some of the, the players that uh, Jimmy and Dino want to see back, hopefully some players that the fans want to, to see back for next season. Uh, but no, at the same time, we've got these two games coming up against Gentlemen and Oxford where I think you kind of uh, alluded to it earlier. It gives a chance for these uh, players who maybe are out of contracts to um, to prove a bit of a point and to you know earn themselves that contract. We saw Daniel played against uh, uh, Fleetwood and I'm sure we'll we'll see Mike and um, you know there are a few others uh, in there who have maybe been on the on the fringe of the the team a little bit. Uh, get them some minutes. Um, maybe that's the case with Kieran O'Hara and just kind of see see what kind of conclusion we come to. Yeah, definitely. I think also it's. I think it's testament to the teams that we're still playing. You know, Gillingham probably a dead rubber, but Oxford is still in the playoff mix. And I think we owe it to everybody in and around the playoffs um, to ensure that we to play our best team and the best football we can to ensure it's fair. Um, always nice to get one over Steve Evans at Gillingham. Um, so, you know, hopefully we're, we're going to attack that game really well. Um, but as I said before, it's momentum as well. Going into... A seat of the finish of a season on two wins or two good positive results will only make you come back pre season um, motivated and positive. So, you know, I think it's important that we, we maintain our fitness levels, maintain our performance levels, uh, and we finish the season as high as the last six months have been for us. Yeah. And like I said, we, we'll push on to these games. Gillingham, like you said, uh, I think that their season's uh, completely over now. They just kind of playing for placement a little bit. I think that really, I don't think they can uh, actually slip their way into the playoffs. Uh, but we have got Oxford on the final day. They're seventh at the moment and it's they're going to want to come and get three points to, to kind of cement their place in, in the playoffs. Um, but no, I think the Gillingham game certainly is an opportunity for us to go out and hopefully play in a similar manner to Fleetwood and, and you know, get some goals on the front foot. You know, we used the ball really well in that game and, and get some shots off and like you said, hopefully, uh, uh, beat Steve Evans, uh, but then Oxford as well. It's going to be a little bit more of a test, I think. That, like I said, they're going to really, really want this this three points. So long as you know nothing 
radical changes uh, before then, and yeah, they'll be coming and they'll they'll really want want to win. So, you know, it's it's going to be two tough games, but Gillingham, we, we're really, I'm really hopeful that we do put on a good show uh, like we did against Fleetwood because that performance was really strong all over the pitch. Okay, we can, you know, conceded the two sloppy goals, but really we were just solid all around and, and you know, it was a good advert as well. We played, like I said, we played good attacking, uh, more attractive football uh, and, and it looked good. And, um, yeah, hopefully that's kind of in the plans for, for next season as well. Definitely. Um, sorry to open to you a little bit now. You know, out of those out-of-contract players, who would you keep and who would you let go? Uh, that's, a, that's a very, very tough question. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'd have to probably look into it a little bit more. Um, I think uh, I'd like to see my mate Mike uh, back next season just because it gives us a little bit of a different dimension up front, maybe one that we haven't quite got uh, and we've seen in, in the games against teams where we're kind of pinned back a bit more, uh, Portsmouth, Charlton, it kind of holds the ball up well, you know, kind of acts as that uh, outlet that uh, teams on the back foot would need. Uh, hopefully we wouldn't need to utilise as much in that role next season when we're hopefully, you know, attacking teams a little bit more and managing to, to pin them back. Um, I, I, I think Danny Rowe has done enough to, to earn himself a contract as well, just because uh, we've got good depth on the wings and in attacking midfield, but he's, he's versatile. He can play anywhere, kind of in that front through behind the striker. And um, he's looked good, he's looked direct, he's looked like a player that maybe doesn't start for us, but kind of uh, can make an impact off the bench. And he's looked good as well. I mean, there's a, a lot of players out of contract. Um, but no, I'm, I trust Jimmy and Dino will, you know, bring everything together and make their decisions uh, through that. No, I think then the biggest thing, I think I, I certainly I picked up on it last week in an interview, you know, never been really released of how long Jimmy's contract is or what his ambitions or plans are. But um, I think the words he used were, we will next season be play, want to be playing more fluid football so you know I think that's a really good signing of a contract I think for me is because it's going to get that you know Jimmy's tied down for at least another season um, you know and, and players will buy into that and want to want to improve and want to play for him so that's a that's a good statement to put out and you know it'd be good to attract people in I think yeah I think you know there's probably a few people uh, slightly worried at the fact that Jimmy will very quickly get, get pinched from us and um, kind of as we had last time when we uh, with Jimmy we got promoted so in this case we stayed up and then we went on a really good run and, and QPR came knocking and uh, you know no one kind of uh, stood in his way happy for it to kind of let him move on with his career if you will and you know it seemed fair and, and, and we just don't want that to happen again I don't think it'll be nice to get another season of Jimmy hopefully a very successful one so yeah it's good to hear that that, you know, we've got that kind of a little bit of security there. Uh, although, I mean, you know, there's uh, there's still work to be done for Jimmy. And I think, although uh, it sounds harsh, but although how excellent we have been uh, at the end of this season, there's uh, still going to, uh, people are still going to want to want to see more because that's what, that's greedy, unfortunately. And, you know, hopefully, like I said, I think that Fleetwood performance is a good kind of, Good, good uh, reference because we were very expansive. <laughs> we were very open. It was a very open game, very entertaining game. Hopefully, something along those lines would would um, uh, treat me very well. I don't think he was going to go anywhere in the hurry. I think you know. I think he learned last time that sometimes the grass isn't always greener, and you know, I think he deserved the chance going somewhere else. But obviously, it didn't work quite for him at QPR, and then they obviously dropped down to Northampton, and it didn't quite work out for him there. So. I think it's important for him to have a job that he stays out for a while. Uh, I'm sure the chairman uh, will also want him around for at least another winter to get some use out of that big long coat that he bought. Uh, a very nice coat as well, uh, if I recall. And uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for them to be released in the, in the club shop, unfortunately. Uh, but I read on Twitter yesterday that apparently uh, Mark Clement was promised that coat if we stayed up. So, Well... There you go. And uh, unfortunately, that means uh, neither you nor I will be getting our hands on that one. Uh, that absolute stunner of a coat. Um, but maybe maybe the same next season with a, 
a, a, a wager on uh, if we, uh, you know, finish in the top half. So, I don't know. But we, we'll look to, to push on. And, you know, like I said, I think Jimmy's kind of learned his lesson, sounds a little bit harsh, but it's kind of, you know, it's it's weird because we know that Jimmy's... He still wants stability. You know, yeah. he wants stability. The same, you know, I know everybody wants to try and progress in the job and test themselves, but, you know, he's tried that once at QPR, it didn't work out. He's then obviously then tried to um, get his his quota of you know experience back up at Northampton. It didn't quite work out there. So it seems at the minute that Burton Albion's a really nice fit for him, obviously, what he did last time and obviously what he's done this time. So I think, you know, I think on a CV, it's it's really crucial to have that little bit of stability, even in football terms, alone in the normal world. So I think he'll want a few years and see what he can achieve from Burton Albion for actually a first full season at a football club. I don't think he actually had a full season anywhere, I don't think he is yet. So it'll be, uh, it'll be good to see if he can get a full 46 games out of him. It, yeah, and it's really kind of a weird scenario. I know uh, there's a few people that were a bit doubtful when he came back, obviously, because he said Jimmy left us. and uh, I was one. One of them there. Uh, yeah, uh, but obviously he left us, went to QPR. It wasn't too much of a success. And then Northampton were struggled as well. Is it a case that uh, this club just suits him down to the ground? Uh, it's, it's incredible, uh, really, how we've gone. I think you know, Jimmy must have a, what, a 64, 65% win record here it's absolutely ludicrously high and like QPR Northampton I think you're in the 20s it's really really strange and but is it just a case that you know it just suits us as a club is it that, you know I think credits got to go to the chairman for that clearly uh, I know QPR and Northampton I think were you know not in the best of places um when he when he went to them and obviously the chairman's you know been running a uh, a, a stable uh, um, kind of environment here for years and has probably got something to do with it. Yeah, you know, I think it's easy to say, isn't it, when you're in there and you've got a job and you've got to kind of respect your, the management above you. But, you know, I think Jimmy said before, even after he left, he had a really good relationship with him, uh, stayed friends. Um, but every every manager that's ever come into Burton Albion has said what a great relationship he has with the chairman, kind of leaves them to do what they need to do, support someone he needs to, um, always there if they need guidance. And, you know, that's a that's great to have as a manager, to have, you know, in this day and age, you don't have many chairman or owners that kind of don't interfere. So, you know, our special little club again um, is special and then unique in that way. And, you know, I think it's one of the biggest draws of getting these very good managers that we've had over the last 20, 30 years. Um, you know, it's testament to Ben, testament to the rest of the staff, you know, that work off the field as well to create that environment that's family orientated, loving, caring and in it together. So, yeah, testament to the chairman, testament to the people he's got around him. And obviously he's, he's built that up. Um, you know, it makes it easier and it certainly makes a massive difference to, the football side of things when you've kind of got things on a an even keel and there's no bumps or anything in the road. You know, you look at down the road at Derby, they're in a sorry state of affairs, aren't they? The, the chairman's already said notably once out. Finances aren't great. The performances on the pitch are shocking. They're having to sell players to obviously to keep the club afloat, selling academy players coming through again to try and pay the wages. You know, I'd, I'd much rather be in Burton Albion's position in the minute than a club like Derby, unfortunately. Uh, you know, they, they've got history. They are a bigger club. Uh, you know, I'm not knocking that one bit, but I'd rather have a club that's stable with lots of stability. Um, so I'm certainly lucky and proud to be a Burton Albion fan and not one of these, say, clubs that are struggling with ownership or part of this big six group or anything like that. And, you know, every Burton Albion fan should be really proud of, of the club for successes on and off the pitch. Yeah, and like you said, I think it's uh, pretty much spot on there. Chairman's done an incredible job. Everyone around him, everyone with him, supporting him. It's been incredible. And I mean, there's only so many times that we can talk about this, how there's a reason that we've flown up the leagues and we're still here. We haven't, um, you know, flown really high and then dropped like a stone. We're still here. We're still fine. We'll be looking to, to push on next season, I'm sure of it. Uh, it's a credit to everyone at the club, really. And 
yeah, an incredible achievement for us to even be here in the first place. Uh, let alone hopefully next season pushing towards uh, the top end of the league. Definitely, you know, people joke about it and they take the mick out of me for saying it. Even my friends who are older than me, but you know, 20, 25 years ago, thirty years ago, when I first started supporting Burton Albion, we're in the Southern and Northern Premier League, non-league football. You, you know, to get to the conference was a, a massive achievement. Then obviously getting out of that to the football league was unbelievable. And, you know, I've always said that I will be proud of Burn Albion if we manage to stay in the football league for my lifetime. But we've gone on to make uh, league cup runs. We've gone on to make FA cup runs at times. We've got to Wembley in the playoff final. Um, Obviously, got the playoff semi finals as well. We've then won the league. We've then got finished runners up in another league higher up. We've got to the championship. We've stayed in the championship. So everyone laughs at when you, everyone says this statement of look where you've come from and remember where you've come from. But we've got to be also really realistic. And it, you know, in the short term of history, 20, 25 years is not a long time. So for Burton Albion now to be a, a stable club, you would hope in the Football League and then League One. You know, I'd have absolutely snapped your arm off. So I don't mind if people take the mick, but I'm proud of Burn Alwyn. I'm proud of the fact that we've come from non-league. I'm proud of the fact that we haven't invested millions and millions and relied on investors to do it. We've done it the Burn Alwyn way. We've done it the proper way. Uh, you know, I wish other owners and chairmen around the country looked at our model of how we've run a football club. Um, you know, and success doesn't happen overnight and it's gradual but if it's done in the right way it can be achieved and Bernal has done that on and off the pitch you only have to look at the facilities at the ground as well to, to show you know it complements what we've done on the pitch as well Yeah it's been I mean uh, wow it's, it's immense um, and, and hopefully we can kind of keep the, the story going which I, it looks like we will do um, and the, the next immediate uh, game that we've got coming up is it's Gillingham, of course, um, who, uh, you know, we've mentioned uh, kind of don't have much to play for. Uh, we'll play them on, on Saturday. Um, what's, your, what's your score prediction? You get one over on Steve Evans. That's the most important thing for me. I don't care which team it was he was managing, but to beat Steve Evans for me is the most important thing. So I'm going to go with a 2 0 win. Yeah, no, I'll be slightly more. Um, yeah, ambitious and, and go with a, a 3 1 win, and hopefully, we'll kind of uh, put, put him in his place a little bit. Um, so, what we're going to do, I think, is uh, next week we'll kind of because obviously, for once, uh, we actually haven't got a, a midweek game, which seems like a, a, a rarity uh, these days. So, uh, we play Oxford in what would work out as uh, just over a week after the, the Gillingham game. Uh, can you see us getting a result for that one as well? Uh, and we'll kind of then we'll come back after after the season is completely done and and bring everything together. Uh, I think we get a draw against Oxford. You know, it has been a long old season and a certainly tough six months, not physically but mentally as well. So, you know, uh, I'm, I maintain that we'll keep going to the end. But Oxford, obviously, a good side, they're hunting for the playoffs. Um, but a win against Gillingham, I think a draw against Oxford, so I'll go one-one. Yeah. Read my mind now. It was also going to go the one one, but we'll change it up a little bit. And we'll go the two two. Uh, like, um, predicting uh, goals galore, uh, it would appear. But no, like I said, Oxford are a really, really good team, uh, and they have a lot to play for. So uh, we'll have to do our best to. We'll have to be at our best to to get any kind of result against them. Uh, and any result will be a good result, I think. Uh, while those teams that you play, where you take the draw, uh, and when we've said that before, we've won. So maybe I'm just placing that in there. Um, but no, yeah, it's a, it's going to be a difficult game, uh, and I take a point, but uh, three points will be better to end the season. Definitely, um, you know, as I said, it's important now just to keep the momentum going to that end of the season. Uh, two more games, and let's just be positive, play without any pressure, be fluid, and finish the season on as high as we have been. You know, we should be really proud of what we've achieved in the end, which is really strange to say we're proud of staying up, but. Um, mass great turnaround and let's get two wins so we can come back in June for pre-season on a high and get going again yeah fingers crossed that we'll, we'll like I said we'll come back with the we'll end on the energy that we want to, to start on next season uh, and and push 
uh, on next season for, for that, you know, that uh, uh, hopefully a very successful one. Uh, like I said, we'll, congr- uh, we'll re-congregate uh, uh, in two weeks' time to kind of talk about the, the season, review the season, uh, look how it's gone. Uh, but but until then, Anton, thank you very much for, for joining me uh, this evening. No problem. My pleasure, mate. Uh, and like I said, we'll catch up in a, in a fortnight after everything is, you know, done and dusted and uh, we can uh, take a look uh, back, but also take a look forward. In, exactly. Stay safe, everyone. Stay positive. See you all yeah, soon. Man. See you later.